morning everyone i am govind gupta here with my teammates vijil and rohan for our ibb project image stitching and panorama so basically this project aims to address the challenges of the image stitching and digital image processing image stitching is a technique that merges overlapping photos to create a panoramic scene the solution is developed using python and opencv and it is designed to handle the variation in angles viewpoints scale perspective and capturing devices the primary goal is to implement an effective image stitching method by emphasizing the utilization of scale invariant feature transformation that is also known as shift for matching the descriptors ensuring scale and rotation invariance this involves locating critical features and comprehensively understanding the image stitching workflow within the realm of digital image processing so coming to the overview of image stitching uh, the initial step of the image stitching process involves the critical task of identifying the key points and extracting the descriptors from the two images to be fused uh, key points are served as the distinguishing characteristics and descriptors encapsulates those unique characteristics establishing the correspondence between these keys points is the fundamental to next step the implementation uses rensec algorithm to estimate the homography matrix which is a 3 cross 3 transformation matrix needed to apply the red transformation This transformation provides the basis for smooth alignment of the images, and so they can be seamlessly integrated into panorama. Coming to the next point, the detect key points and descriptors. Key points detection and descriptors extraction are the fundamental step in image processing and computer vision. Key points represent the unique features in an image, while descriptors capture their distinctive characteristics. Key points should be distinctive, scale invariant, rotational invariant, and affine invariant. Descriptors should be de distinctive, compact, and noise tolerant. The choice of algorithm depends on the application and design performance. Uh, now coming to the algorithms. Uh, so basically, we have various algorithms. The shift, scale invariant, feature transformation. This algorithm stands out for its robust to scale rotation and change in lightning. It meticulously examines the each image point, considering the gradient, magnitudes, and its orientation. The next we have the surf. speed speeded up robust feature which is the alternative to shift surf excels the accelerated computations the next is brisk binary robust invariant scalable key points it focuses on the efficiency and scalability the next one is the brief binary robust independent elementary feature providing a lightweight binary descriptor brief is an ideal for resource constrained application so while each has its merits and demerits we have chosen this shift algorithm Shift's unique ability to handle the scale, rotation, and lightning changes with precision makes it ideal choice for our project. It is meticulously analysis of key points and their surroundings, coupled with those thoughtful weighing by a Gaussian window, ensures a reliable and robust image stitching process. For the next point, feature matching, I would like to call Vigil. So we have done with the first main method out of the four steps in our project, like detecting key points and which typing the local description is over. Now we'll come to the matching the descriptor of two images and here is a slide okay so here we have two method one is like brute force is there and one knn method is also there brute force will be a little bit slow uh, here will be considering considering first each descriptor of one image will be matched to all the descriptor of the second image so it will take a bit more time than consider to the first method but in the first method uh, matching will be like we'll get a single match but if you are using knn mm -hmm. algorithm we'll get k best matches for each of the descriptor so that will be better like it gives us a larger set of matching images to choose from so that will be a better option so for the brute force we can use a bf matcher that will be explaining in the code part so here there is there are two options one is for like if we are using the key method matching for uh, that two algorithms that basic will use euclidean distance so when we come to bit string matching all those things we'll have to consider hamming because zero one when we do a squared root method it will give only zeros and ones so it will not give any information for us to carry on so so for the bit string we'll use hamming distance for that vectors we'll have to use hamming distance to get some insights for a, a conversion so and having distance is a metric for comparing two binary data strings so we can see here the matrix examples given below while comparing two binary data strings of same length having distance is a number of questions with two different ways you can see like d1 is given 1101 and we'll compare it with each row of d2 
so we can see in the first row like three of the bit position are different like we can see it here in d1 d2 comparison is there so first row of h mentors will be three and then two two one so that is the main difference when you come to euclidean because euclidean doesn't give any information to carry upon so that is the main hinge here and yeah after matching we'll have homography matrix and and after that wrapping will happen so i think rohel will carry with that and i will be i'll be explaining the code after that thank you um, we, i'll be explaining the last part of our uh, presentation the last three slides and i'll be beginning with the homography matrix so uh, the homography matrix basically is a 3 cross 3 matrix and the speciality of this matrix is basically we can multiply the original image that we need to change the orientation of with the homography matrix and get the transformed image that will be a, basically a perspective transformation of the homogeneous coordinates so what in simple words what we'll be doing is we'll be taking the input image multiplying it with the homography matrix and the output image will have the same orientation as the image with which we need to merge it with so take two images let's say of a book one image where it has been rotated by say 50 degrees and another in which it has been kept horizontal so a homography matrix will essentially map all of its corresponding points one to one to create this to create the parallel orientation of the book in a different plane so that is what the homography matrix does and the calculation of this homography matrix the accurate calculation of this homography matrix is very essential to our further task so next we'll be looking at the ransack algorithm which will help us to calculate very accurately the homography matrix which will help us to finally create our image panorama panorama okay so we'll be moving forward with the ransack algorithm okay uh, let's look at the ransack algorithm so ransack algorithm essentially is will be selecting a set of feature matches totaling to four pairs then we'll be fitting the homography matrix and we'll be calculating the total number of inliers and these steps will be repeating n times so after repeating these steps for a certain number of times we'll finally select the homography matrix with the largest number of inliers and recompute least square homography estimate using on all inliers so basically the homography matrix with the highest number of inliers will be the most accurate homography matrix so basically the ransack algorithm essentially helps us to calculate the homography matrix in a more accurate manner that is the that is the basic function of the ransack algorithm so uh, we'll be moving to the final final slide uh, which is image warping and stitching so image warping and stitching is will be our final step where we'll be using the warp perspective function now this is a speci special function that is you that uses the homography matrix to change the orientation of the input input image into the transformed image which will help us in our pan panorama panorama creation because we need both the images to be in the same orientation while creating the panorama so we will be applying the homography matrix we will be multiplying the homography matrix with the input image and we will be get will be transforming its orientation into the required into what is what is required to create the panorama so um, finally we will will be stitching both the images and creating the final output image panorama uh, now after this uh, bijil will be continuing with the code part where he'll be will explain in detail the working of our entire code and uh, then that is that will be the end of our presentation so we have completed the four main steps like in the beginning we started with the identifying the key point and features then we did the matching of the uh, descriptors and then we went for uh, the homography matrix and ransack algorithm and we at the last there was a wrapping transformation so i will go through the code this working i will show in the code like first we will importing the libraries which is required the uh, cv2 the open cv library in numpy is for matrix manipulation and matplotlib for plotting 
and these are the main uh, libraries which are using image.io and warnings are there and for the feature extraction algorithm we are using shift that's why we have taken a separate variable and I mentioned it as shift and also that feature to match so that is we are using brute force that i mentioned bm and is also there but we are using brute force here to show the results so the first we are reading the images and also we are converting to rgb for backlog because the convention in one cv is different and then we are reading both the images here so we can see like first image is here second image is here and these two we are going to identify the key points and then matching and all these things so this is the function for selecting the descriptor we as in like it was explained in detail in the slides there were four methods and we are using shift here and this can be chosen like we are calling the function here right so after calling the function we'll get the features and key points here that will be saved as both both the images will be uh, saved separately the features and key points and then we'll we just printing here that or size and orientation all those things of the query image you are printing here just to confirm uh, whether the things are going well and yeah so this is the main point like whatever features and key points we have acquired like these we are showing it here you can see the green points here so the feature matching and the key points you can clearly it is clearly visible here and there ends the first step then we move to matching so Matching, yeah, as I explained, we have two methods basing with the SFT and surf that will go with the Euclidean method. So, coming to ORB, that binary string there, there, Euclidean will not work, it will not give some insight. So, we are using Hamming distance there. So, for that, we are using CV2.norm Hamming, and this one is for Euclidean distance. And coming to key point matching. We have using brute force here. So brute force matching we are using here. We are calling that function here. And as I told, we are, we can also use KNN. This is a function for KNN. Like we can get the K best matches, not a single match. This will be better. We using the KNN match will ensure better quality. And coming to the brute force, like this is a showing. We are just showing the image after the matching that this is using brute force like we have if and else if it is brute force it will go through this and if it is KNN. so we can call any function based on what is the requirement and this is output after matching the features and then it comes the homography stitching and for assumption minimum corresponding points between two points we are assuming it as four so based on that we'll get the results here and yeah so after that we'll get the homography matrix we can see eight degrees of freedom the matrix we can see it here after stitching and then uh, wrapping will happen so we are taking the image width and height we can just do basic math we can like it is taking the width of of both the input images and then calculating it and then wrapping it purposefully so this is the final output so this is the code explanation hope it is it was interesting and it was a good opportunity to learn more things like OpenCV, even though we have explored it before, but we got to learn new things. And yeah, that was it. Thank you.